right, everyone, and welcome to our live stream series, Pop Dust Playlists. I'm your host, Abby, and today I'll be talking albums with the band Future Teens. So welcome, everyone. Hi. Everyone, all too. <laughs> Yeah, so they're a really fantastic rock band based in Boston, and their new EP, Deliberately Alive, is out now. So I'm going to be asking future teens about records that have impacted them throughout their lives. So first of all, can you introduce yourselves? I'm Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> I play in the band Future Teens from Boston, and I play guitar and I sing. I'm Amy, and I also play with Daniel in the band Future Teens, and I play guitar and sing as well. Nice. So first off, can you just tell me a bit about the new EP, which is great, by the way. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, uh, go for go it, Amy. For it, Daniel. <laughs> All right, I'll start, and you okay. then you can take it. So it's a we put out a five songs, four originals, one uh, cover uh, that is by Cher. And, uh, well, no, sorry. We covered Cher. She did not cover us. That <laughs> That'll be next. Uh, That's the next DP. <laughs> we can't say. Uh, <laughs> uh, and we worked with uh, our favorite local and general label, uh, Take This to Heart Records. Uh, our good friend Joe runs it. So, uh, yeah, they're, they're awesome. A lot of great bands. And... Uh, yeah, it got pushed back a little because of the obviously the current situation, but we're excited it's it's finally out. And and now I'll let Amy talk about it a little bit too, if you like. Amy. <laughs> uh, I mean, at Dan, I don't know. Daniel covered the uh, the bones of it. It's I think um, folks have asked if it's like, is this your pandemic record? And uh, it's I I think that it sounds like one, <laughs> but uh, it was the seeds for these songs were were with us before we knew that this was going to happen uh and then i think are like colored by our experience in the pandemic and the way that they came to like their completion definitely mm -hmm. had to do with that experience of like isolation and not getting the tour and stuff right right so you guys at least i i hear a uh really awesome like pop punk inspired sound. And I don't know if you agree, feel free to disagree with me, but I feel like <laughs> pop punk is, I feel like it's a. It's always been a very polarizing topic, always a very hot topic. But what album do you guys feel like is sort of the quintessential like example, like pop punk 101, what would be your go-to? Well, I have to first say it's funny because when we're, we, we've been, we kind of straddle the scene so like when mm. we play at a pop punk show we open, people are like, you guys are like indie rock country. <laughs> and, then when, and then when we play at a, like a cool rock show, people are like, you guys are emo pop punk straight up. So it's like, it depends what world we're in. I right. Think. Uh, so we'll take any, there's no, there's no negative genre in my opinion. Mm. You know what I mean? Like it's all good. Whatever, whatever people, as long as they're not saying it in a disparaging way, I guess it's fine. <laughs> whatever people want to say. <laughs> But Amy's much better at, <laughs> Amy's like an encyclopedia for, like, they'll put on, like, you've never listened to this Spill Canvas record? I don't know if that's what it is in a band in that scene, but they just know everything, so I'll let them answer this question. Yep. All the time, uh, I'll, like, make a reference to, like, a, what I consider to be, like, important classic emo or pop punk, and Daniel will be like, I don't know. The only thing in that zone I listened to was like the Get Up Kids, and then uh, <laughs> all of a sudden I discovered Radiohead, and I was too cool. Um, that's, that's that's middle school me. Yeah. <laughs> Not current me. me. Uh, so my my older brother uh, really like he was going to Warp Tour and stuff in high school when I he's eight years older than me, um, and he and my sister, who's also much older, uh, were like listening to. Good Charlotte and Sublime and Sum 41 uh, when I was, you know, seven, eight years old. Um, so one of my first CDs was, I think I bought Sum 41's All Killer No Filler and yes. uh, like an MXPX Greatest Hits <laughs> um, and shared them with my brother. Uh, so those those were like my childhood. Sum 41 is like a, is a must have to me. And then mm -hmm. Uh, one of the things I make Daniel listen to in the van and then he immediately falls asleep is Taking Back Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> so soothing. 
I sent him a song the other day while we were writing. He was like, is this a thing Taking Back Sunday does, like this way of, of training vocals? And I was like, yes, literally every Taking Back Sunday song does. <laughs> oh my I gosh. Get like, under the influence already. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> uh, yeah, great pick so far. I agree that those are staples. Mm -hmm. um, so obviously you are called Future Teen. So I feel like it's naturally I have to ask what album do you feel like encapsulates each of your teenage experience? I know we don't want to go back there, but like music wise, <laughs> <laughs> if we were to go back there, what album would, would summarize that? Um, f for me, I, there a few records, but there are certain records I listened to in my youth where I longed for the painful experiences the person was singing about, if you know what I'm saying. Like, I listened to Transatlanticism, and I was like, oh, I want to be in a long-distance relationship. Like, then I was in one, and I was like, this is horrible. I don't know why <laughs> I longed for this. But th that that record, uh, the Get Up Kids, Something to Write Home About, was really big. Another song about long-distance relationships. Um, yeah, those are probably the two the two ones that I felt like like really sad about in like the, a good way. Like, you know, I, I, I listened to on my disc man, literally. <laughs> um, oh man, I was heavy, early teens, heavy into Fall Out Boy. Mm -hmm. uh, I like, I would ask my mom to schedule my uh, doctor appointments on the days that Fall Out Boy records came out so I could leave school to go buy it. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, uh, uh, have like yeah. a very vivid memory sneaky great. Like, mom infinity on high is about to come out i really need to go to the store um, i i hope amy's mom isn't isn't listening right now <laughs> <laughs> if Honestly, she is she hello would, she would love it what's up arhoff if you're out there thank you for enabling my emo bullshit uh, and don't be mad that i just cursed uh, <laughs> Yeah, my, my high school band very badly covered a Valencia song once. Ooh. Uh, I screamed along to uh, All Time Low and Jack's Mannequin in my car and laid on the ground in my room to Taking Back Sunday. <laughs> I love that. I, I feel like I also relate to the experience of listening to music that was like way too sad for experiences that I had in my own life. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. You, it's, it's, yeah. I don't know. You're. It's like. I guess it's like you just want to experience stuff when you're young. You right. don't really care if it's good or bad. You're like, I just want to experience some some life. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have or do you have an album in particular that you feel like made you want to be a musician? Interesting. Um. I don't know if there's one in particular. I think I I went through some. My phases of songwriting were heavily dependent on what band I was obsessed with at the time, mm -hmm. much to the sacrifice of the songs, in my opinion. Like, when I got really into the Decemberists, I was like, I gotta write about frickin' chimney sweeps now, because, <laughs> like, that's what's cool, or, like, sea shanties. And that's horrible. Like, I should, that no one should be doing that. I mean, someone should, but I shouldn't have. <laughs> uh, and then, like, I got really into My Bloody Valentine, and so I was like, I need mm. to, like, write shoegaze music, and I got all these guitar pedals for that, but eventually, I think that helped me eventually, being, trying to copy other artists' songwriting styles definitely helped me learn w or navigate to what I felt like my style was. Mm -hmm. um, so it was all, all important stuff to do, but it was some some really bad music that I wrote. For a long time. <laughs> um, my, my parents took me to see this like blues rock guitar player named Johnny Lang when I was a kid. Um, we went to this like theater in Springfield, Missouri. It was a big deal. My dad was thrilled. Um, and I played a little bit of guitar at the time, but that show was my moment of like, holy shit. <laughs> I want, to that. I want to shred like that. And coming home was like, man, fuck emo. There are no guitar solos in good Charlotte songs. Oh, no. <laughs> um, but I, I grew out of it and then decided to put guitar solos in my emo songs. I think um, nice. I kind of came out of like 
blues rock, uh, gospel tinged baloney uh, when I started <laughs> listening to emo. Like uh, that first Fall Out Boy record, Take This to Your Grave, is like what got me to start writing songs. It's like, I want to write shit this sad. <laughs> less misogynistic though i hope yeah yeah <laughs> I, I i definitely think you achieved that <laughs> it's, it's it's not it's not a difficult bar to pass but you you made it <laughs> um so yeah so obviously i love the believe cover certified perfect song just in general no mm. matter who's singing it um but i feel like especially in the pandemic a lot of people have been releasing covers um which which I think is great. But do you guys have any album, like if you had the means and the time and the resources to, what album would you want to cover like front to back? I feel like this is a perfect opportunity to tell you that we run a, a, a band camp benefit compilation label. Mm -hmm. uh, so instead of us covering all this, our, the songs on our favorite albums, we ask a bunch of friends to each cover a song. Mm -hmm. uh, so the two albums we've done so far are uh, two perfect albums, which are Taylor Swift's Red yes. and Carly Rae Jepsen's Emotion. Yes. Uh, so, I mean, so far, those are the only two albums that have been perfect enough to for us to, and our friends are interested uh, mm -hmm. in, in helping us cover. Um, but it, maybe, I mean, there's gotta be more, I mean, I don't know, I Amy, have, if you, on Amy has one in mind, I'm sure. <laughs> this is, this is constantly the, the thing that's happening is I will, I will be like, please, this song, please, this record, we got to do it. And everyone's like, Amy, maybe sometime. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 we'll get to that. Okay, when, here's my answer is Golden Hour by Casey Musgraves. And, uh. I, w I will die on this hill. I've been yes. dying on the hill of, can we please cover Space Cowboy for three years? <laughs> yes. <laughs> maybe, the, maybe that's a, that's another comp idea for us. That's good. There's, there's, that's, that album is, is almost entirely good songs. There's like, <laughs> there's like one song I really can't stand personally. Which one? Wonder Woman. Mm, yeah, uh, that's fair. It's, okay. it's, it's just the lyrics are too, it's like, okay, you had this idea and you just, it's too much. There's too many references to Wonder Woman, in my opinion. It doesn't really, there's not the, the it's the metaphor is totally mixed at a certain point. It's like, what are you even saying in reality? Daniel critiquing songs is either, what does that even mean? Or, uh, or with, what record, it was a Taylor Swift record. We were listening to Lover right when it came out and he was like, she just rhymed man with man. Can we change the song? <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I can't. The, the same word rhymes. I just, I can't listen. Yeah. I think NSYNC did that a lot. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I support the Golden Hour cover. My I think my last time doing karaoke pre-pandemic, I did High Horse, and then I immediately mm. regretted it because it's way too high for my register. Yeah, um, <laughs> so so maybe maybe bring it down a couple keys, and then yeah. we can get right. the Golden Hour cover. <laughs> yeah, we'll hit you up. <laughs> yeah, we'll start we'll start the GoFundMe so we can get a <laughs> get a Golden Hour whole cover album yeah, yeah. going. <laughs> Um, so you're based in Boston, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Um, what are some albums that either maybe either like some friends from Boston or just albums in general from Boston based artists that you really connect with or kind of remind you of home? Well, even just this last week, our friends Old Soul put out, they put out a single, I think it's just a seven inch single, but um, really from are yeah. from Boston and we love them. They just put out a, an amazing record. Uh, who, who, who else, who else Amy recently? Um, who am I missing? I mean, we miss all our Boston friends. We miss yeah. like playing any shows. Mint Green's from Boston. They're awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure we're missing people and, and, not, and I'll feel that. But <laughs> I mean, Boston, Boston music scene is like, it's big enough so that there's always new acts you can discover, but small enough that like you probably are friends with someone who's friends with every band. Like it's like, right. and it's small enough that also if someone wants to play a show, there's not any like snobbery about it. It's kind of like, 
yeah, sure. Like if we can make it work, let's do it. Let's go play a show and, or play in this basement or whatever. So, um, it's, it's nice. It's, I don't know. I think New York has more like specific cliques of bands and Boston like is a little bit like that, but there's a lot of crossover between all the different friend groups, mm -hmm. which is nice. Cool. Amy, do you have anything to add? Um, I really love Lilith's last record. Um, I'm suddenly drawing a blank. I feel like uh, every like every Boston band just like moves to New York. <laughs> uh, Darling Side put out a record this past year or in 2020, which is like ridiculously good. And they're they're they I think they say they're Cambridge based, which is a little fancy, a little fancier. <laughs> Close enough. Yeah. Um, so a lot of people, myself included, turned to a lot of older music in the past year. Um, do you guys have any albums that kind of brought you some peace within the just hellscape that was 2020? You got one, Amy? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I started the year listening to a lot of Chelsea Jade. Uh, okay. It's a really, really great pop act from New Zealand. Um, I saw, she was the last show I went to, I think. Um, unbelievable. And uh, I listened to a lot of Cheek Face, Title mm -hmm. Fight, uh, God, Cataldo a lot. I, I started like just riding my bike and listening to hardcore a lot. <laughs> like brought back my love of Defeater. Uh, a little bit of everything. Nice. I, I've been, honestly, I've been listening to mostly horror audiobooks. Um, <laughs> But uh, when I do listen to music, I, it's either like completely ambient, no lyrics, like I don't want to hear any words. I just want like, like filled in silence or whatever you want to call it. But then, or I want to get kind of pumped up. So either like Spanish love songs, who we were supposed to tour with, who we love, and their last record is so freaking good. Like I'll go to the grocery store and just get like real pumped up while I'm and like cry a little bit while I'm walking around and that's kind of nice <laughs> and cathartic. Uh, Wild Pink, our friends mm -hmm. put on an insanely good record, and then every time I finish the Wild Pink record, I just put on Bruce Hornsby. I, I'm on a huge Bruce Hornsby <laughs> kick. So I had never listened to Bruce Hornsby before 2020, and now other than the way it is, which like everyone knows, I feel like, mm. but oh my god, Bruce so so good. So good. So good. Highly recommended. Every Little Kiss is one of my favorite songs of all time. Oh, yeah. Same. Immediately. Are there any other, um, like, newer albums? I know you mentioned Wild Pink and Really From, but were there any albums kind of in the past couple months that you're just like, damn, I really need to hear this live as soon as possible? Um, our buds, Regrown from New Jersey, put out some songs the same day our EP mm -hmm. came out, and it, it's so sick. I... We played a, a really absurd DIY show in a pizza shop with them, uh, <laughs> and I've been dying to see Regrown again ever since. Yeah, I was blown away. I was like, this PA is so, like, it was like a terrible sounding show <laughs> with amazing bands. So it was like, oh. I, I just need to see you with like a proper, I can't imagine how good those bands, you know, would sound in like yeah. an actual venue, even though it was extremely fun to play in a pizza shop like they were literally they were literally still serving pizza when we like loaded yeah, in <laughs> like moved to a pizza shop at the last second we were supposed to play at yeah. somebody's house and then they were like dude i'm sorry uh, <laughs> one of the kids worked at this pizza shop and was like i got this yeah oh my god <laughs> cool all right well that is all the questions i have for you guys so we i believe we're gonna have future teens play a couple songs for us so if you want to take it away, go ahead and play us play, some. We, we can each play a, a, one of the singles. Or okay, cool. Yeah, that so, sounds good. Does that work, Amy? Yeah, sure. You want to start or should I? Go for it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't played any of these songs in so very long, so. I, I played a few today because I wasn't sure. I was like, oh, shit, I'm going to have to look up the lyrics when I want some of I know, I was thinking that. I was like, I might even do that. No, I, I think I know that. <laughs> I know the new one. Yeah, I think I can figure it out. So you guys just, oh, okay, now it's just me. <laughs> I was like, you guys are just going to watch me while I do this. 
Alright. Here goes. Singing into the void here. I think this is broken and it won't end till someone says something that they
not sure which one I feel worse Going young and getting old Yes, I'll take whatever comes first It's not like I had a say in being born Going young and getting old At least I'm not convinced I deserve either one anymore Going young and getting old Yes, I'll take whatever comes first Going young and getting old Sound like I had a say being born Going young and getting old At least I'm not convinced I deserve to be the one anymore Not sure which one I feel worse Going young and getting old so good guys and thanks everyone for tuning in and thank you future teens for joining us today their new ep deliberately alive is out now so thank you <laughs> all right everyone Bye. <laughs>